Hey, it's Quinn from Speed Hero. Um, I am coming today with you a rant off the top of my head. This is not scripted. I just want to tell you what I'm thinking. Um, but to me, your local tech at your local drift event is killing drifting. And I mean that in the sense of culture. I mean that in the sense of uh, internal conflicts. We'll talk about that. Um, just to give you context, I've been drifting since 2003. Uh, I have, uh, for the last 13 years, I've worked with Capital Drift, but I've run events outside of Capital Drift, uh, and I did events before that as well. Um, but I want you to talk to you uh, about CapD, because one of the things that uh, worked with us is for the last 13 years, we ran two events a month um, at eight hours of track time an event at a minimum of 40 drivers. We'd somehow sometimes have up to 70 drivers there. Um, but if you do the math, that's about 100,000 hours of track time, which seems insane, right? Uh, that seems a lot. And in that pro in that time, uh, the majority of things we had uh, was broken collarbone. I think that's the worst thing we ever had was broken collarbone. Um, there's a couple concussions. Um, but we ran cageless tandem uh, since 2008 until last year when our track closed. And one of the things that I love most about CapD is we had a really good drift culture. What I mean by that is you went to the track and for the most part, you felt safe operating your car there. I heard recently, um, and this has been a debate for a very long time, I heard recently that um, some people are trying to make uh, the build quality, the quality of your car represent your seriousness of drifting. And I don't like that. I would have never been able to participate in drifting um, if that was the case, if I would didn't, I could never afford the wheels. I can never afford the the you know the cool engine swaps. I can never afford the um, big body kits and the cool paint. It's just even now, at, you know, 20, through, 20 years later, drifting, uh, I still can't. Uh, but uh, one thing that Cap D did well was tech. If you showed up to Cap D, a person came in and teched your car, and if you didn't pass, you didn't get to drive. I've done events all around the world in Japan, Australia, the UK, the US, um, all over Canada. And the one thing I've noticed is every other tech I've ever been to has been absolute shit. And a really good example is last year I was at Summit Point and although it was a really fun event, I rolled up to tech on a borrowed car with a flat tire and uh, the guy just waved me through. He's, he said, you drove up here, uh, you're good to go, and put a number on my car and sent me out. He didn't check my helmet, he didn't look under the hood for uh, oil leaks, he didn't check if a battery was tied down, he didn't look for any sort of like, you know, if I had lug nuts, or even if the, the suspension was attached to the car correctly. Just the fact that I rolled up to the tech line um, uh, was enough for him. Uh, events in Ontario, events in Australia, even events in Japan I've done have been similar. Japan is a little bit different. The culture there is people don't usually bring shit. But for some reason in North America, people think it's okay to bring shit. And I'm not talking about a nice looking car. I'm talking about a car that is mechanically well maintained. Your local tech guy sucks balls. And I'm sorry, if you're one of those tech guys, get better. Uh, <laughs> it sucks to say, but the reality is that the tech is the most crucial part of having a good drift event. Here's why. Um, not only does tech uh, make sure that the car is safe, one of the things that we did at CapD is we actually physically got inside their car and pressed the brake pedal. That seems insane, but people would show up to the events with non-functioning hydraulic brakes. I went to a Spirit Peaks event and the gentleman didn't have front calipers in his car. He had deleted them uh, because he couldn't get his hydraulic brake, hydraulic handbrake working, so he just deleted the front brakes on his car and only made the rears work off the brake pedal. People show up with stuff, with solutions like that. Um, and it passes tech because nobody checks. Everybody thinks that there is this, some sort of common sense, but the reality is that there is a lot of selfishness in, in um, westernized drifting, that they themselves and their personal brand need to be seen and that they need to, their friends and, and the uh, random internet likes need to let them know that they're doing a good job. And that's cool, that's fine. Um, but the reality is that you're also at a higher risk of embarrassing yourself. I've seen a couple great videos where people have had their wheels fall off or their batteries fall out of their trunk. Uh, and 
it, it, it risks being a, an embarrassment as well when your car isn't actually safe and ready to go. So the tech is super important because not only does it uh, make sure that the car is actually going to make it through the event safely, so it keeps that driver safe, but it keeps the other drivers safe. Does that make sense? Here's uh, <laughs> here's one of the, my, my, my big, biggest pet peeves is we ran Cageless Tandem for, again, 13 years. I'm gonna punch this in your mind that we ran it for eight hours in a, an event and sometimes up to, uh, I mean, there was one of our more recent events, we had a 30 car train. Nobody hit anything. Nobody had any problems. None of those cars had cages. And this whole cage culture comes from the lack of quality of tech. But that's a separate topic. The topic I'm talking about today is the fact that you have to have all this high quality build in order to participate. The thing that it sounds like people are trying to solve is to solve the send it attitude. Let's talk about attitude. I absolutely hate the send it attitude. If you have that sticker in your car, I cringe, I cringe in the deepest, most unacceptable, unfunny way. Send it is bad. We're gonna lay down what's called the golden rule. Your, f we'll start over here. Your fun shouldn't ruin other people's fun. That's it. If you're trying to make a decision with your automobile, just know that your fun shouldn't ruin other people's fun. If it's going to ruin other people's fun, don't participate. So your tech guy, that's the, your first line of defense to having a good quality culture at your event. Have your tech guy check if this person's expectations and, and hopefulness uh, is going to ruin other people's fun. Is their car gonna stop? Is their car gonna turn? Do they even have grip or on their front tires? Do their brake lights work? Is their battery gonna shift around and ground out and cause a fire? Are they having fuel leaks or oil leaks on, on their car? Is everything well attached? That's it, that's all you have to do. Make sure the seat's well attached. Make sure the, the steering wheel's not an eBay cardboard wheel. They're all eBay cardboard wheels. Your nardy is not real. Um, make sure their brakes work. Check the lug nuts. Look under the hood to make sure the battery is tied down, the positive is covered, and it's not leaking oil. Look underneath the car and check the brake lights. Make sure this, if we haven't covered it yet, make sure the seat's actually attached to the car. That's it, that's all you have to do. Nobody does that in any of the techs except for the Cap D one I've seen. Um, a lot of people say that their car will pass Formula Drift tech. Well, having been on a Formula Drift team, the tech in FD is shit. It's checked once a year, and if they suspect maybe something, maybe sometimes they'll check. And even then, you end up sending in photographs of your car ahead of time so they can pre-tech them, and so the tech process is quicker when they're actually doing the one tech they do a year. So FD tech is not something to compare to. Make sure your car can stop, turn, and, <laughs> and actually run correctly. Um, another problem uh, that proper tech solves is it makes other people's track day go better. So if somebody spins out and dumps oil all over the track, that is tr that is track time that you can't uh, afford to lose. A really good example of this is Spirit Peaks. I love Spirit Peaks. It's a shame that the local culture has changed uh, and that they uh, made some, I think, bylaws locally to restrict the amount of track time. That means they only run twice a month from 11 till 4 p.m. It used to be the whole day. They used to even run every weekend but it's changed. So that track time now has become very valuable. But their tech guy, as lovingly and nice of a man as he is, opened up my hood and went, probably, and put a sticker on my car. He had no idea if, if anything was okay on my car, but regardless, uh, he was very nice to chat to. But nice doesn't equal helpful. Though during that day, somebody did have a control arm fail and a lot of us lost a good 45 minutes of trying to get that car off the track. 45 minutes of five hours is a lot of time. And so for the, I think 60, 70 drivers that was there, that's a lot of track time lost just for that one person's control arm that could have been hopefully checked, although that's a bit of an extreme example. It would be really hard to identify that quickly and easily as a tech guy, I understand. Regardless, uh, if the tech is done correctly, it improves the potential for everybody having a better track day. That's one example. The second is um, it show, there's, you're less likely to have um, an embarrassing moment happen at your track. 
So if something silly happens like um, the wheel falls off and the car flips over or, or something stupid like that, you're less likely to have that happen. That's on you as an event organizer and as a tech person to have that image about your your brand of um, event. And it's, it, it's preventable or hopefully, not entirely preventable, but it can be reduced just by spending a little bit of time uh, in the morning checking the cars. The other thing that comes up from here is a check of culture. Your tech person isn't just there to be good at car. You need somebody who actually can talk to people and measure the quality of their decisions. So when you come into the event and you have that send it attitude, you're like, bro, I'm just gonna hit the wall, fuck it, bro. <laughs> then you, your tech guy can, can flag that right away. You can, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's a really good opportunity, especially to hide behind that tech issue. If somebody comes in and they have this really bad attitude, then you can look for something to fail them. I know that sounds insane, but that's a way of controlling the culture. If you're trying to control the culture, if you're trying to have build quality and uh, you know hide behind the fact that people can't like people who are poor can't participate, then that's absolute shit. Rich people and poor people both have good and bad attitudes. It doesn't matter if they if they can afford a cool body kit. If they show up and they have a bad attitude, they shouldn't be there. So your tech guy it has a lot of. Uh, opportunity to control the culture of your event. They can they can control the quality of, of vehicles passing from a safety perspective, not from a style perspective. They can tr control the culture, but they can also act as an initial verbal waiver by having by measuring and having a chat with the people. Not not in implicitly implicitly you know beating them about the rules, but just measuring that they understand the rules. So. Your tech is really, your shitty tech, your lazy tech is really what's making your events shit. And if you were to improve your tech, you could have more cageless tandem, which makes drifting more attainable for more people. You put a cage in the car and all of a sudden now you need a truck and a trailer. So it goes from being a, you know, a three to $4,000 buy-in to get into drifting to being a 15 or $20,000 buy-in just to get the same track time. And it all boils down to that tech guy. If you can control the culture, if you can improve the attitude of people attending, then their fun won't ruin other people's fun. Everybody gets to have fun. Everything becomes safer. Uh, and you improve drifting in the eyes of the track owners and also the, lo the local community. But you've been so lazy about tech for so long, it's actually affected the culture. So if you are running an event or you know people who are event running an event, try to improve your local tech. Be more strict, it's okay. The more strict you get with the, with the quality of tech, not the quality of style, the quality of mechanical, um, mechanical assembly, and mechanical, uh, yeah, I mean, okay, we'll just leave it at mechanical assembly. Um, the better uh, track days you'll have, the more track time those people will get, and maybe it ultimately reduce the cost for everybody. Something to think about. Please uh, uh, improve your local tech. Bye.